Hello everyone and welcome to One Guy's Opinion number two. This is the second entry to this ongoing uh, vlog. And you know, I've been actually considering to either have a written version of this in my uh, blog. You know, uh, I haven't done anything there yet, and I've been, you know, seriously considering to either make this an ongoing uh, feature or at least a weekly feature along with with the reviews or just start um, a different blog uh, and you know you know as you know start one guy's opinion as a different blog from the one that I already have but you know I'm still working on that uh, so anyways um, this week I'm going to talk about a little bit about what Marvel, you know, announced last week. It was big news. Uh, it's been talked about, you know, endlessly. And for me, I mean, of course, it's not big news at all, as it is to a lot of people, you know, who read comics. It's not. A big deal this sort of stuff has been done before but what bothers me is the way Marvel has been handling uh, the, the the publicity for for this whole thing which sort of makes it seem a bit like a stunt you know to get attention which they don't really need uh, I mean, you know, if you look at, at the sales figures, um, they're, you know, usually on top, whether it be in market share or dollar share. Um, but, you know, the way they're handling it is as if it's the newest thing they've, they're doing, like it's edgy and novel and, you know, like it's never been done before, which bothers me quite a bit. I mean, I think there's an article on Userama where I think it's Axel Alonso uh, who said, you know, it goes like, we're not afraid to shake things up, which it really is not a big shake up. It's been done, as we know, as I said before, as, as we all know, I mean, times before, so it's nothing new. The other thing... Um, which sort of you know bugs me is that you know they go and announce these big changes in the mainstream media which again you know it's just you know a way to get attention but you know this is just like a little blip in you know what goes on in the world and uh, of course they did it because it's coming out I think in October you know that these changes and you know solicitations just came out so that's why they did it that for the same thing goes for DC and their uh, creative changes they announced it before San Diego obviously because solicitations just came out so you know they had to do it, but while you know DC used the trailer channels as always you know the trade uh, websites you know the uh, comic book news sites Marvel had to go all splashy and if they plan to catch you know the the non readers and try to get um, you know new readers to their um, to pick up these books I think it's really short-sighted because regular people those who don't read comics they don't know where to get comic books and if you're gonna do something in the mainstream media then you should let people know where they pick up the issues you know when they come out and uh, where to get them or you know like I mentioned in last week in my last in the very first one first um, 
one guy's opinion got through mainstream uh, mass market outlets you know and you know that's where you are going to pick up the casual readers who don't read comic books that's you know where the first contact should be should be should be made um, so while the announcement uh, itself the way it was on sounds like a publicity stunt more than anything else and uh, really that's that's what bugs me a lot about the way Marvel is doing things these days plus you know the renumbering you know which I say business uh, that's what I started in college I'm and the way they're doing business it seems like now they really don't care about cultivating you know readers they're just they just want short-term solutions for a long-term problem which is people aren't reading comic books anymore so you know that the assumption that number one sell which they do uh, doesn't really guarantee that you know your older readers are going to pick up that new number one and um, and uh, sometimes it's just uh, once you end the series before they renumber it uh, a lot of readers are going to jump ship that doesn't guarantee that they're going to pick up the new number one which in comparison you know when DC relaunched their line they haven't really relaunched any any books I think they've only done that with Teen Titans and Suicide Squad they're gonna give uh, Deathstroke another shot but you know time passed uh, or it made sense at least to them it made sense uh, but I don't think they were really looking for a sales boost uh, unlike Marvel unlike Marvel who keeps doing this and hoping to get new readers but in doing so they lose readers you know A lot of DC books have gone through creative team changes, but they haven't really relaunched uh, any of that. It's when a creative team changes in a long running book, it's you know, you might lose readers, but most readers already, pick, already picking up that book might give the new team a try. You know, unlike you know, a max exodus might come when a title is cancelled and then restarted. Most people will find a way to leave that book and try something else. So you get little sales boost with the new number ones. Speakers go crazy over those, but you know, just a little, just a little boost, just like 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 non-events. If you will because event comics again you know they're so frequent crossovers that there's really nothing special about them anymore and uh, you know um, and uh, and you really can't call it an event something that is constantly you know um, when you have con constant, you have a lot of crossovers over and over, you know, one story and then you have a next crossover and then that crossover even changes and, and then you get another one, you know, the thing that made, you know, something like Crisis on Infinite Earth so special is because it had never been done before. Uh, so that was an event, that was special. But when it becomes, you know, a regular thing every year, uh, it does 
start to get tiring. Uh, well, you know, back in the days, a lot of that stuff happened, and you know, it wasn't uh, something that happened like every, you know, every day. To me, I mean, you could cross over with with inner title crossovers, but like major events. Uh, were still a bit rare, I guess, but now, you know, they're really just, you know, every book, almost every book, suddenly, you know, finds itself with an event. At least between Marvel and DC, you know, you have a uh, constant cross uh, crossovers. I mean, one of the reasons why I left Marvel was because I started to feel they were becoming uh, the company with crossover events every month. You know, you had a crossover here, you had a crossover there, and you know, it does get tiring. And uh, speaking of that, you know, Green Lantern is a book that suddenly became an event book and uh, the books themselves I don't think they had have a haven't got a chance to have their own identities. Um, I was actually I'm actually thinking of dropping Green Lantern just because, you know we just fin they just Green Lantern just ended a, a crossover uh, with Green Lantern Core. Then we have this month, this coming August is off. Uh, just a regular issue. Then you know we have you know the future Zen thing, five years later thing, and then in October another event with all the London books, and that might actually run for at least the rest of the year. And you know it's getting kind of tiring because. You know, Green Lantern in an event. You know, a few months later, another event. A few months off, another event, and that's pretty much been uh, on par for the book since Sinestro Core War, I think. Where you know, you know, it's just been one big crossover event after another uh, with a few months off uh, before the next event and all the issues prior to that uh, big crossover are building up to that event so there's really you know sometimes I just wish we didn't have you know uh, we had just mundane stories you know or mundane little arcs that don't build you know, to something bigger, just, you know, regular stories, you know, you know, um, it, it's tiring and I might actually just drop Green Lantern because it's just being one event after another, I'm getting kind of tired, um, I think I mentioned it in my Green Lantern review, I just wish we had, a I just wish that Green Lantern would focus on Hal Jordan and not on Hal Jordan and the core. That's why there is a book called Green Lantern Core, which focuses on that. And I believe John Stewart as well. And have Green Lantern just be Hal's book. He's still there, but he's there with you know a, a whole bunch of, of Green Lanterns. And you know it doesn't really focus on 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 how on in the continuing continuing to develop his uh, character. You know it's just I don't know there, and uh, you know that's why I dropped Marvel because of so many events coming from them. Um, now DC is just again doing events and it is getting kind of tiring and you know we, between events and all those variant covers 
I think you know, um, you know, comic book companies should just go and try to, you know, go and try to go back to their own, you know, market, which is you know the uh, the mass market, you know, the uh, newsstands and other places where you can sell comics, you know, as because you know the comic shop is just a very you know small amount of people coming in into shops and uh, there is a chance to gain new readers because of parents who actually read comics and go to to shops but again, that's just still a very small, still very small uh, gain of, of readership. And of course, uh, as any parent would be concerned, is you know what kinds of books can I, I give, I can buy for my kids to read? Because one of the things that the direct market did was that it liberated uh, a lot of publishers to do things that would you know um, you know back when back in the 70s and 80s when when that started you know com book comics that were being sold in shops didn't necessarily have to go through the code the comics code and now that there is no more comics code, um, you know, writers and artists and publishers have much um, more freedom to do, uh, you know, interesting things, sometimes pushing the envelope, but that um, aren't you know, necessarily uh, kid friendly or, and even the little kid friendly books, you know, they do cost a lot of money. They, they're pretty much the same as, as regular comic, you know, 299 books, uh, which, kids, which is more a parent's responsibility to buy than, you know, the kids. But, you know, when you have all these superheroes, sometimes these superhero books, again, you know, you know, Things have uh, gone to the point where it's being written for for adult, adults. Uh, not so much thinking of of you know the potential uh, new market that new new readers, new buyers, you know, kids who. I mean, if you want to have the next generation of readers. You have to start with, you know, kid, you know, uh, so that's become a bit of a problem. I mean, does me have to dumb things down, but, you know, start considering that, you know, 14 year old kid or 15 year old kid might uh, be interested in a comic, uh, you know, you know, and start thinking, you know, outside the box, uh, and once again expand. I mean, one of one really good idea I came up with is why not uh, test the waters, you know, in in the mass market, and you know, do comics that to care that that uh, general public. Uh, like you know they did back in when shops were becoming the new thing uh most publishers shirts and i mentioned in the past in my in the past but in my past uh blog that uh, they tried to do specific comics for the direct market while still having books that went to the newsstand and you know the the mass market outlets
so why not do something like that um, like that um, and start just testing the waters and see if it's possible to get that uh, casual reader, reader. Uh, one other thing I forgot to mention about this whole renumbering thing is that uh, like I said Marvel things you know they get a boost with a new number one but in the past uh, you know changes like this would happen within that ongoing series and you know Marvel thinks you know this is a good jumping on point uh, for new readers it is you have to treat a number one like a number one try to get a little expression out of out of uh, you know the character's history whatever, and whatever you know else you need to because in the end even if it's a number one if it's a relaunch title with you know a not so new character you still have all that other continuity to deal with you know no title no number one is continuity free unless it's a really new character which goes to characters like you know Ms. Marvel uh, by the way I'll be picking a few issues up um, uh, but you know in a couple of weeks Anyways, something like Miss Marvel, which is a really new character. The only thing familiar about her is, you know, the name, but everything else is new. So it's a new character, and uh, you know, it's continuity free. And but it's a spelling continuity. But if you go for something like um, uh, Captain America, now that the Falcon is Captain America. You still have all that other history to deal with, you know, that will lead him to, you know, this point. So even if you have a new number one, uh, and trying to make it as accessible as possible, there's still a whole bunch of, of, of history, you know, with the character. So it's not, you know, you know, why, why do that? I mean, it's like just continue the numbering of the odd all title you know I mean it doesn't really mix even if it's a new direction you know and it's happened in those old wrong long-running titles of the past that certain changes would happen within this own series and even and when it happened you, know, you had a big blurb in in the cover maybe telling you it's a whole new direction or whatever and you know that would attract readers the whole you know number one thing is just you know an illusion as to like I said to sort of try to bring you readers and you know because it's number one it's the beginning of something which it is but it's basically you know just as the way Marvel handles things just like a few bunch of uh, it's a large story with a few bunch of works being told that could have been told you know you know in, in a long running title but you know they think the new number one will attract new re readers and uh, it might uh, but doing it the way they did the announcement uh, it's just a uh, a blurb in in mainstream in the mainstream media which also brings me to my final point in this uh, blog uh, and you know I'm usually talking here uh, about how things are in the States but I never really told people how comics are being handled here in Mexico now Mexico doesn't have a comic book industry proper proper you know there aren't any Mexican comics uh, a lot of people have tried but most publishers don't publish or aren't interested in publishing uh, this comic so a lot of uh, Mexican writers and artists uh, have tried to do that 
uh, self-publish but didn't have the means to you know to last long uh, you know to get the word out about about their product but you know publishers do publish um, American comics you know that makes it dumb versions you know the translated versions and here in Mexico um, the newsstand is still a very important source to sell comics uh, the mass market you know uh, is really where it's at here and here um, you know you can find comics in any outlet that sells uh, any local that sells you know magazines you got them in the uh, newsstands including you know trades and hardbacks are sold you know in in newsstands and in uh, closed uh, stores you know that sell comic that sell magazines they also sell comics plus you know you you, you still uh, have the comic shops as well so there so recently here in mexico uh, there's been a huge boom in in, in publishing comic american comics uh there was in the past uh there was one publisher that pr pretty much uh held the monopoly on on comic publishing they actually published marvel dc uh Image, you know, Top Cow, Wildstorm, a few others, uh, you know, back in the 90s, early 2000s. Then that company went away. And, you know, just a few years ago, uh, Marvel, uh, one of the major publishers here, which is the branch of a huge media conglomerate called Televisa, uh, they got their rights. To publish Marvel, uh, book to publish Marvel. Then they moved on. They also acquired for DC, and recently they they also got uh, Vertigo. That's uh, I think a couple of other publishers have taken into publishing the um, indies. You know, uh, Image, Boom Studios. I mean, I mean, we even have Rachel Rising being published in Spanish now, so which is very cool. And you know those books are sold in 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 the mass in you know mass market outlets and uh, uh, newsstand and those you know the uh, indies which are much more mature in the material those are actually sold in the sealed bags. I think they do have a warning that these are for eighteen older. I'm not sure. I haven't. I'm not sure, but I know that they are actually sold in in sealed bags, while you know the Marvels and DC stuff is being uh, uh, sold, you know, you know, without anything, you know, because it's Marvel and it's superheroes, not so much mature content, and so they're there uh, for the world to see, kids to pick up. Uh, wherever they like to buy their comic, whether it be in the uh, newsstand on an, or in these other stores or, you know, in shops, they go to shops. Uh, and one interesting thing that actually happened, I believe it was some, either Thursday or it was Thursday, I believe. I was, yeah, Thursday. I was watching local TV, which I hardly ever do. And I was surprised to actually see that uh, the company that's actually publishing Vertigo had a TV commercial, uh, an actual TV commercial, you know, for for Vertigo Mexico, and I thought that was mind blowing, you know, and it was on in, on channel on channel five, which is a national channel uh, focusing on the uh, younger demographic you know I'm talking from small children to you know teenagers and even young adults depending on the uh, 
programming because we have they have for young kids and then you now we have uh, prime time which has you know yeah american sitcoms on and that was just just mind mind blowing for me um and it made sense because you know anybody watching that that might be interested in checking anything from vertigo they can go to their local newsstand or a store or you know your comic shop and, and ask for that uh, they go to comic shops but you know anybody who doesn't know about comic shops you know can go to their local newsstand or uh, these other stores so it's been a bit long so I had I didn't have you know anything to show or anything uh, but um, um, if you went through my whole talking thing I thank you very much uh, don't forget to leave a comment uh, if you agree or disagree or want to add to the discussion uh, I'll be very thankful so now with 31 minutes I say as I've always done until next time keep smiling